Hey class, welcome to week one. I told you you would be seeing a lot of me in videos, didn't I? So here goes. Uh, as I posted on the uh, on the announcements board for week one, you're going to be responsible for uh, completing the week one discussion board. And remember that your initial discussion is due on Wednesday, and then you'll respond to two classmates on Sunday. Very important. Please, please, please respond to classmates because um, 20 points are dedicated to responding to your classmates. So um, please make sure that you're responding to your, your, your classmates. You also have your written assignment this week and you have a quiz, okay? Um, I think the course is not too heavy of a lift and I just wanna encourage you to give it your all, give it your best review the materials that, that that have been provided for you to watch or to read. And I think uh, you will do just fine. But if you find yourself struggling, reach out to me. Again, I really wanna help you succeed in this course. Uh, some things that I wanted to talk about this week. Uh, one of the things that you will see this week is we were uh, covering a leadership actually teach an entire leadership course at another institution, my alma mater, Florida International University. So I'm really, really um, passionate about leadership. And I also did, um, if you remember from my introduction, my welcome video, I told you that I did my studies in organizational leadership and behavior. So um, leadership is a topic that I've actually done formal research on. There are different types of leadership um, styles. You have your autocratic leader, uh, which is more centralized power where the leader makes all the decisions without input from others. Um, the leader imposes rules and regulations um, and employees have very little say in the, in the decision-making. And that's more from the industrial revolution era of, of um, a lot of us probably weren't alive back then. Um, that type of style was really, really popular and it worked back then probably wouldn't work today. There may be some situations today where that type of um, leadership style may work, for example, in the military, um, but not a lot of situations. You have a democratic leadership and each of these leadership styles has um, their advantages and disadvantages, right? Um, you have your democratic leader who um, encourages input from team members, uh, facilitates discussions and encourages participation and really, empowers um, employees uh, and makes them feel valued, okay? You have a laser fair leadership um, where the leader provides very minimal guidance or direction. So there's a high um, level of autonomy and agency um, for employees. Um, so they have a lot of freedom and, and independence to shape their work and the results of their work. Um, and this can have a uh, very varying levels of success, right? Because if someone um, needs guidance and they lack it, they probably won't do well at their job. Um, but if someone needs little supervision and can thrive in um, under a lazy fair leadership style, it might be a, a good fit. We also have transformational leadership. Um, this is a very inspirational type of uh, leadership style where the leader really empowers and motivates and inspires um, their employees to achieve transformational and, and extraordinary and, and innovative results, okay? Um, this is usually seen as a visionary um, leader, and it really gives a lot of agency and ownership um, to employees to be creative and to be innovative. Lots of other leadership styles, but the last one that I want to anchor in, which you'll um, see a video about actually in this week's um uh materials is servant leadership and this really is a, a theory or a philosophy or a way of leadership a style of leadership that emphasizes putting the needs of others before one's own um so really being a servant uh to the people that you're actually um leading and it really acts to foster growth empowerment and collaboration amongst your your team members um, and servant leaderships, this is not to say that other leaders don't have these qualities, but you would find a servant leader is really empathetic. Um, so they're really understanding and they really share in the feelings 
of, of other people. And empathy is really important given all of the racial, given all of the psychological, emotional, and other types of trauma and taxation, and not just racial. It could be based on gender. It could be based on sexuality. So many things are emotionally and psychologically and mentally draining and taxing on us. And so we need a leader that's empathetic, um, you know, in the workplace. And that is a servant leader. Um, a servant leader is humble, right? Recognizing that his, his or her or their own limitations and strengths and really leveraging people on the team to help that leader, you know, in areas um, where they may have some opportunities to do better and leaning in to help those within the team um, who may have, uh, you know, certain weaknesses. And a, a servant leader builds community to so really creates a sense of belonging and really connects with the people on the team and, and helps the people within the team connect with each other as well. So those are some of the really, really important factors uh, of servant leadership that you will um, read about in this week's uh, course materials and that I really wanted to, um, you know, just emphasize to you. So that's it for now. Again, you'll be seeing a lot more of me, lots of videos, this block. Um, and again, if you're struggling with anything, um, please reach out. I like to think of myself as a bit of a servant leader. I'm a very empathetic person. Um, I do uphold certain values and rules um, because we do need to uphold and maintain academic integrity, but I'm also a human and I know that stuff happens, okay? Um, so reach out to me if you're encountering any issues and I'll be happy to discuss um, a path forward. Uh, have a great week one. Reach out to me if you need anything and good luck on your assignments.